Hey everybody, Edo here, and I am excited today because I have Han Chara on the line. Say hello, Hans. Hello. And one of the cool things, in addition to everything we're about to talk about with his workshop, is uh, you are somebody who backed the Gaming with Edo Kickstarter. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thank it, you. Yeah, well, I, I appreciate it. As part of it, there's this sort of topic, content curation things, and we talked a little bit and decided this would be really cool to talk about what you're doing. So um, as a little bit of a, a jump in, uh, and it's light, fun games, right? You get that yep. right? Awesome. Yep. Um, can you talk a little bit about just how you, you know, transition from technology and getting into, into just the board game scene, and then let's talk about the workshop you're doing um, with, with uh, Mike Selinker's book. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, there's a, you know, everyone has their story about how they got into uh, board games and board game design. So I'll, I'll just cut to what I'm doing now. <laughs> sure, uh, sure, sure. Everyone loves games. I love games. And, uh, but, uh, so I, I started getting into game design. I was running abstract uh, strategy games at Gen Con and Origins and started meeting a lot of different people um, over the last uh, 20 years. Um, I really like the, the design aspect the development aspect of games and so um i also know that you need to have play testers so i come up with an idea i'm like how do you get play testers involved how do you uh you know teach uh people game design theory and how to put all these elements together so i decided to uh, uh create a workshop and part of it i had to relocate uh for for my career so i was starting over in uh, boston didn't know many people, so I thought, okay, how do I build a, a network of playtesters like I used to have in a new area? Um, a lot of it's going online, but I like to I like to be in person with these people. So I put together a workshop um, based around Mike Selinker's book uh, from Cobalt um, called the Board Game Design, um, and it. Uh, so I wanted to have like a a ten week workshop built around that, and so I figured if people going going through that. Um, play testers would emerge, new game designers would emerge, and it would also sharpen everyone's skills to just keep keep doing it. And since it's a ten week commitment, people can uh, try it again, and you can pick up new uh, new refinements every time you do it. So let's talk about that baseline for a little bit because I haven't had anyone, um, I haven't interviewed anyone who's been doing anything like that in that sort of learning workshop engagement place. When 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 you talk about a workshop, just as some fundamentals. Um, you said ten week program. Is it once a week? Is it twice a week? What's a, what are the periods? How does that work? Yeah, so it's once a week um, in person, and then there's a number of uh, activities and exercises that you would do for the next for the next week. So the first one, you can show up cold. Sure. Uh, we discuss things like you know what is a game. You know, just uh, try to get a definition on it. I call it board games, but then you start to realize that you know what what's a, what's a card game like uh like strife you know sure. is it is, a, is that a board game and then you expand that definition to say it's tabletop and then we include things like rpgs and card and board uh, board style games so you start with the basics and then i try to point people in the right direction and say hey you've already got everything you need to build games it's all around you um, you have note cards you have other games that you can use the components from you have a dice already um, so i try to um, I try to uh, bring attention to all the psychological pitfalls that people have. It's easy not to do something in the creative arts. It's easy to to do the side things like uh, collect game components and organize things into bins and label everything. But you're not actually game designing. You're just kind of uh, getting ready to design. Sure. I think it's just easier to do. So I start off with exercises like, okay, let's build a game with these you know, a uh, few bits that we already have. And I just use like envelope and some index cards and we start right away. So people realize that you, you have the tools already. Right. And, and, and so true. I mean, that, I, I haven't ever done anything that's like a, a course, but at, at schools and at sort of other places I've participated in a day or a couple hour type of class where you talk about some of those things as well about how, and so this was the pilot one, but how many, people is it uh, you know what do you say is in the group going through the program at the same time is it a hand like four or five is it larger than that so yeah we did a pilot uh 10 week course um this fall we just wrapped up a few weeks ago and we uh we had 25 people go through it um, awesome. 
That's I mean that's a yeah. full that's a full room. Is it? Yeah, um, yeah, it's really great. Uh, and is it is it something people pay for? I mean, what? How much does it cost to participate? What? Is, how does that work? So the way the way we did it, it's, it was the cost of the book, and so everything else was just uh, you know free free on top of that. Um, we're going to run it again. Um, I'm going to do do the whole thing again. You know, obviously we got a lot of uh, uh, feedback and also just observing it. It's kind of like a play test in of itself. You know, right, you, get, right. you get lots of information. You know, what would I do differently? Um, the, uh, the company I work with is also very, uh, uh, once I started advertising and trying to get people to participate, I found out at the company I work for, which is MathWorks, I found out that there are already published game designers there already. So that was, uh, that was fun to find out. Um, <laughs> they're uh, like, Hey, Hey, we're, we're, we're making... <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, can we participate? So that, that was, that was great to have two published, uh, game designers go through the workshop as well. We have Alex Churchill, he made a game called Steamworks with sure. Tasty Minstrel Games. Um, and then uh, we have Joe Johnston. Um, he's from the Boston area, and he he's created modules for Labyrinth Lord, which is an RPG uh, series. And so it was awesome to have two people that were um, already experienced and have other games in, a, in the pipeline go through it and then be able to pick out something useful. I also let them uh, participate as well so they could... They could uh, uh, lead uh, sections and give awesome. information. So well, that's sort of how you, as well. that's sort of how you start building a community. Um, over here, there's a game design. It's not it's not specific to board games. It's in some ways even a little bit tailored to, to video games. But um, at Gen Con, uh, not Gen Con, uh, GDC Game Developers Conference in San Francisco yeah. in March, um, my first mentor Andrew Leaker, as well as uh, Mark LeBlanc and a number of other folks. I uh, have work and and do a course uh, around um, game design. That's it's it's in front of GDC. So if GDC is Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, they do like a two day crash course, and I think it's like six or eight hour days on each day. And it's a lot of not they not they don't follow the, the same text that you're following, but they you know it's it's a lot of bring the groups together. Everyone breaks off into teams. They build something. They have feedback loops. That whole their sequence is very heavily based on the work that Marco Blanc did on mechanics, dynamics, and aesthetics, which is a yeah. sort of a different framework. Um, but it's a super compelling way to engage and, and um, be thinking about games. I, 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 almost, I almost, you know, think there's an opportunity um, for those types of engagements with designers as well. I mean, at sort of at, at a, at a not entry level, but a, um, you know, a more experienced conversation about those things. Because I feel like, a lot of game makers come from their genre or their, you know, yeah. the specific type of game they like or mechanics they know or fiction they like or theme. And they don't necessarily talk about what are the tenets of a solo game or like what are, what are the key mechanics in, I don't know, dexterity <laughs> or, or whatever. Um, yeah. and, and there's probably some interesting conversations there as well. So, and so you, so 10 weeks, you talked about it, it's sort of like a fall, type of thing or winter or whatever it do you see now that you've done one i mean is your intent and and, and so I, I think we said this you're based in massachusetts like yep. very specifically if somebody's interested in this uh it lives in that area and is interested in this course uh assuming you're not doing an online version of it what um how how can they find it and, and, and engage so on uh meetup there's a meetup called metro west uh game design so if you join, if you join that, you'll get you'll get the information on the next one that's starting up. And so I found, I found local libraries, and uh, you know, uh, I think you, you you actually used to live out this way, so yeah. you kind of. Um, so I found some libraries that want to want to host the workshop. So we're gonna we can meet there. So I fundamentally, it's about building a community. That's what that's what I like to do is get people together in the same room that have similar interests that all want to learn something. Um, so. Part of it is I can get out of the way. I can point people in the right direction. It also, you know, uh, it also gives me a way to introduce new ideas and test it out with people that are really willing to learn these things. Right. I mean, there's and and the the video game community in Boston is actually pretty pretty rich um, from some major studios that were in that area. And then um, then there's also I, I'm gonna I want to say Boston Figs. What is it? What is the name of that um, the convention that's in Boston for independent games? Is it figs? 
Awesome. Uh, that sounds right. I'm not sure. Um, I, I'm new to the area, so I'm the. Well, so 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 um, those, uh, I think his name's Tim Blank. I got I I I, I'll, I can look it up. But there's um a bo- there's an indie game convention there each year, which I'm uh, um it, which was heavily video games, but has since drawn in and grown on the board gaming scene. Um, nice. and so okay, so and so you're starting to build this community uh, in in Massachusetts, and again, I I think this is so interesting too because I mean that book's available, um, you know, to other people, but this idea of how do you enter a space and start meeting and engaging and, and creating um, um, sort of hot spots for people to start engaging and and and, and growing. Do you, other than running this course more and more, you had mentioned all the play testing and other things you're doing. How do you plan on yep. introducing those into the area as well? Uh, like, like doing a doing play tests yeah, and things like, like that. that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, what what's been great is it's kind of like you're building up a little bit of a collateral with with people. So I'm I'm giving a lot by running and putting this together, giving feedback on people's games. Um, but throughout this this pilot workshop, we actually had four different designs emerge. Um, which was amazing. I didn't, you know, I didn't, uh, I think people were looking for that reason to put uh, 10 weeks into game design. And so we had four games come out. We uh, scheduled uh, supervised play tests um, with those games, um, spread them around. um, And, you know, so those designers can get feedback. And so part of it is they're, they're kind of, uh, they're also attracting play testers. They're incorporating their friends. Their friends are like, Hey, how do I learn about this? And so I've, I've heard these downstream conversations start to happen where lots of people are getting involved um, because of these four um, great, you know, early designs uh, have come out of the workshop. So I think people are looking for that spark uh, since games are so huge right now. And uh, maybe it's the search of the great American novel where everyone thinks they have that novel in their back of their head. Maybe everyone thinks they have a board game. Um, but in this case, I, I try to give people the tools to actually get a design out and also keep the process very iterative. The one thing I talk about a lot is that you're going to have lots of designs um, if you do this. It's not a it's not a one time thing. You're not going to hold on to this one game and um, that will be your life story. Is that one game that didn't get published? You're going to be you're going to be uh, designing dozens of games uh, throughout this process. Well, right, and, and then and then they get to learn and enjoy the whole Kickstarter conversation or public <laughs> conversation and all the things that follow yeah. from those next steps. But but it's true, yep. right? Sitting down yep. and dedicating time to designing and learning about design is is, is super valuable. I remember, um, it's one of those areas where even I think um, there's always opportunity for continued learning and refinement as you gain a vocabulary, as you gain examples, as you gain an understanding of the different pieces of, of, of how the fundamentals fit together and the mechanics fit together. Because a lot of designing, I mean, even for myself, is a little bit more like, I sort of want a game that, like, in my head, feels and, like, works this way, and I'm more goalpost-oriented where I'll put something in, and then I'll play it, and then I'll move, and then I'll play it, and then I'll move, and I'll play it. Yeah. Versus somebody, a lot of people start much more systematically. I mean, there's just different skill sets that approach making things. And, um yeah. And, there's lots of and they all work. Different. That's the oh, thing yeah, I yeah. wanted of course to they tell do. people. Yeah, absolutely. They all, all those approaches work. It's, it's partly uh, uh, getting a little bit of focus uh, every day and, uh, and doing that. So we talk about the um, – I, I apply to the strategy of one hour of focus per day uh, for, for projects, especially if you have a hobby or if you're learning something. You need that one hour um, and keep, keep at it. And so sometimes you don't have the spark of creativity. You don't know how to fix something. Uh, but that, that, uh, those touch points, uh, and regular touch points, it's, it's amazing what emerges after, after a few weeks of attention. Sure. Um, and in the beginning you, you don't, you don't see very much benefit and you may give up. And then after a while you're like, wow, I finally fixed that, that problem I was having. Um, I'm also a proponent of shelving games. So once you get to a point where a design is, uh, is play testable and it's playable, um, start another design. And it, it, it seems like, uh, how our brains work. We like to try to, <laughs> we, we can fix things by getting distracted or, or we can take a and B and add them together and, and create something new. It seems like we're wired for that. For sure. And, and actually a really important lesson that I learned early on from, from Andrew, 
um, who shelves games and keeps a game box and all that was just sort of yeah. that, like nothing's ever wasted, right? If yeah. you spend time and you invest energy into something, it doesn't really matter. I mean, certainly you want it to move forward, you want to produce it and all those things, but the energy it took to make it, the learnings that you learned along the way, the idea or concepts it represents, you know, there's countless times we'd be working on something and then he'd be like, you know what, I did something one time that was sort of go back and he'd be like, well, yeah, we could take this mechanic and just that sort of, you know, don't always think of the value of something being the end product. Um, there's inherent and yeah. intrinsic value along the way. It's super important. So there's lots of yeah. those opportunities. Um, one of the things you may, I mean, obviously you're using Mike's book. I mean, have you, I mean, is it sanctioned? Like, how, are you, did you just grab his book and you're setting up, how, have you spoken with him? Can you? How, so yeah, I, um, yeah, I've talked to Mike a few times over the last, you know, few years, just in general. Um, I back his Kickstarters and, uh, things like that. Um, I did mention to him online that I was building this workshop. Um, and he seemed to be really excited that, uh, someone was kind of had an academic, uh, angle to, to the book. The book is, not designed as a tutorial it's not like step one step two and step sure. three um so he was super excited about that and uh coincidentally a, a few weeks ago in las vegas at um a, a conference called reinvent uh mike was invented or invited to uh to do things for the conference and uh my company is uh is a partner with amazon so we we were out there for different reasons so we actually got together and we talked about the workshop so um, so he's, he's aware of it and we're going to see how it fits into, you know, uh, the book in the future. Um, the way my workshop, uh, puts things together is, uh, takes, takes from the chapters and adds, uh, hands-on, uh, experiences to it. And also each chapter gets discussed so you can, uh, you know, explore what's in there. And sometimes you're not ready as a game designer, you're not ready, or if, if you're really new, you're not ready really ready for meta discussions about what rules means you yeah, know what sure. what's a, what <laughs> or what emergent behaviors are right, right. Uh, what is fun you're not you're not ready for those kind of uh those big discussions where you just need to know how to get started um and so that's where the workshop can kind of fill in those those sure. uh, those pieces and those discussions come and those are also really fun to go into the psychology of gaming why do you play games um and so uh, one of the first exercises I have people do when they come into week two is they list out their five, you know, games that they really like and try to try to write out a why statement. Sure. Like, why do they like this game? And so that's um, we play games. And so you can start being like uh, you can be reflective while you play games and you can kind of observe it and say, why are we having fun right now? And in my mind, you know, I can ask that question. Yeah. Why am I doing this? <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's so. actually a great way to um, be, be introspective about gaming and understand it more and what you enjoy and what other people enjoy. Um, for me, one of the amazing um, results of doing the review channel uh, yeah. was the just range of games I now play. Um, like, yeah. The, the amount, the, 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 and, and having to talk about them and think about them critically, right, is, is just yeah. a huge increase in volume from what I've, I've done in the past. And act, a couple things came up while you were speaking. One was, I mean, I, it seems like a total great add on to say, here's this, you know, not, not, uh, Bible is probably too strong of a word, but reference and, and design book. And then, you know, here's an attachment, which is how you can workshop and learn it and have a, a more interactive experience with it. I, I think I can't speak to how good your material is, but assuming the material is good, it seems like a nice match to, to, to engage with the, the, the text. Um, the other thing I was thinking of, just totally as a side, totally in the moment, yeah. one other request that I received um, through the, uh, um, the Kickstarter for Gaming with Edo was somebody wanted me to... Uh, interview a number of gamers who are oh. just gamers and not, I mean, they can't, you know, they could asp be aspiring designers, but really in the context of, hey, Ed, you always talk to people in the industry and this and this, but why don't you just talk to a couple of real gamers? And I, I think it's reasonable. I don't know if it's going to have the most views of any video, but like we're, we'll do it, right? Because that's <laughs> how, how it all works. But perhaps, I mean, if, 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 if uh, since you have all these groups together and you're interacting with these people, maybe we could work on actually putting together a little 
panel and doing it that way to get, because I was just yeah. going to pick somebody, but if, since you're, maybe I can pick three or four people of different, different likes and, and, and sort of have a group conversation, which might be fun. Um, yeah, that sounds great. But anyway, and so, okay. And so you've, 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 you're obviously your, your, you, you have your main gig and your job and your work, you're pursuing this as a hobby. You were, you know, play testing and, and building at your group. And now you're, you're, you know, you're built, you know, you're starting to really try to become part of the, the fabric of your community and do more, you know, is that where do you see yourself as, you know, practically speaking, a teacher and a mentor? Or do you see, like, I guess what the question is, and, and I uh, recently interviewed um, Daniel Zayas and I sort of had the same 2018 question. When you look at 2018, um, how do you, you know, in a year, where do you see yourself? Where do you see the work that's going on? Uh, yeah, great question. I, but there's got to be some kind of goal in mind. <laughs> no, not <laughs> necessarily, but I was just curious. Uh, Perhaps there is. I, I mean, I, I do have goals. The The goals are I have uh, I've designed a number of games, uh, you know, throughout the uh, throughout my time in the industry. And I'm I'm excited that um, that I think they're going to get better and and new 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 designs are going to get better. And then through this, you know, through this workshop, um, you know, being able to spend time. Uh, with uh, Joe Johnston and uh, so immediately you know we had a lot of synergies and we were like yeah we have uh, the same ideals let's uh, let's put let's let's create a game together and so that was one of the uh, one of the things that emerged from this that I wasn't expecting when I started um, is to do like a, a collaborative design and so I'm excited about doing that and learning new dynamics of having a like a, a team uh, to design a game and so that that's been interesting um, but 2018 looks like, you know, having, uh, having a group of play testers, um, where the, they can get, uh, they have, they're not necessarily blind play testers, but they're, they're ones that understand design enough to be able to give critical feedback, um, and constructive feedback. So I think that that's something that will emerge from this. Um, for me personally, it's just, you know, wanting to be a part of the, the industry that I love that, you know, so much. Um, and then at seeing it grow and tie in my, um, my experience in entrepreneurship and business and in technology and see, um, if there are things that translate over into this and in, into this industry. Cool. Cool. And certainly when, as you move, right, as, as you have these four games that have emerged from the, the workshop that are gaining some traction and your own designs and that kind of thing. Obviously, yeah. as I as I sort of alluded to, there's this learning curve and opportunity for learning around. Hey, it's Kickstarter time, and and what are we going to do there? <laughs> yeah. and, and hey, it's, is, uh, yeah, it's publishing time, piece. and what we're going to do there, and, and and there really is that um, um, length of work um, and length of learning. If it maybe is a better way of saying to do along the way. Yeah. So being able to encapsulate those things and build from them is, is super valuable, both for you, but then probably for the different people involved in what's going on. Um, as, as the industry is continuing to, to change and grow and, and, and react to all the disruption, right? Yeah. Um, there's a lot going on. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, in this space. It, you know, it's a it, lot of fun. Yeah, it, 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 it's certainly a lot of fun. There's a ton going on I, again in this, this conversation with, with Daniel. I, I'm mentioning it cause like I literally had it like an hour ago, um, <laughs> was that, um, you know, uh, you can have your own opinion on how the industry is changing, but obviously there are, it is changing and the world is changing and disruption of direct-to-consumer, disruption of, you know, I mean, when I look at even things like unrelated to board games, just the amount of stuff that gets dropped off at my house versus when I go to a store in this year, like I can just tell by the, the literally how many cardboard boxes I put out for recycling. It's like a job now to like, <laughs> <laughs> take yeah, all those down and, yeah yeah and, yeah, and yeah. so and, and and things are changing right shipping so, has changed yeah. yeah the way we buy things has changed and i think partly uh you know channels like yours um you know doing reviews and walkthroughs have really changed the industry because i used to go to a store you would see a game i would have no idea what's in there and i'd, I'd literally make a a check and say, okay, i'm gonna buy a game today i've already made that decision i don't know which one i'm gonna buy and i would buy one if i'm disappointed that is negative feedback. Now I can appropriate $50 to a, to a game with a lot of research. I, yeah. I get to see what the game feels like. I get to see you talking about it. I get to see uh, people unboxing them. That's something that, you know, 
has radically changed oh, uh, for the sure. industry. Yeah, I agree. Though at the same time, and this is where I think you know the retail scene is is progressing, is it's still inherently the social play with other people experience. I mean, you have tabletopia yeah. and these other things, but really, when somebody has a game, they want to be able to play it and experience with other people. So, um, I think that's why you're seeing a lot of the shifts in the service orient service oriented game stores and retail and things like that. Um, so, no, it, it, it's super fascinating. And super cool, um, but we'll have to see what what it all means at the end of the day. Um, <laughs> yeah, and and something I'm seeing is uh, uh, in business schools, there's there's people who are in you know graduating and realizing that, uh, or, or not realizing, but they're they're creating business plans that are in the gaming space, and I've never heard of that before. Um, and now I'm hearing these anecdotes, you know, people graduating from a business school, they have a marketing degree and they write a business plan and they get investors, uh, yeah, to, to create sure. a board game company. I'm like, that's something that's, uh, new <laughs> to this yeah, space. It's a lot like video. I mean, I grew yeah. up through the, the, when I was very, uh, a kid, there was the far side comic with, oh, man, I don't even remember it perfectly, but basically it's the kid who, um, it's like the kid wants to make video games when he's older and the parents are making fun of him or something. I don't, I, don't, I can't really, I gotta, I gotta go look it up again. But, but there's this idea that, you know, from when I was a kid to now, you know, in video games, it's become a profession and a gigantic industry and every, you know, and it's, yeah. and you're seeing the same board games though. Obviously with board games, you still have to manufacture stuff. Um, yeah, but, but yeah, no, it's super fascinating. So anyway, um, uh, super cool what you're doing. I think you, uh, I, I wish you luck with it and I'm very curious to see how it goes and how it develops. Um, perhaps yeah. uh, it'll be included in a book or perhaps you'll have some um, online version or some way for somebody outside of your little neck of the woods to check it out though. I haven't been to Boston yeah. in a while. Um, do look into what that Boston convention is. Um, it's yeah, I will. I wrote it down. Yeah, um, because it's, it's really the mecca for board game groups in that space. And I think um, obviously... There's not PAX Unplug, not quite in that area, but reasonably in the area, and a lot of cool things yeah. happening. Um, yeah, I was. Uh, I heard a lot of uh, actually someone that's in the Metro West game designer group uh, went to PAX Unplug, and that was you know that that looked like a phenomenal uh, first first show. Um, yeah, yeah, certainly so. from board game stand. I mean, like at the yeah. So there in the board game insider industry, there's a little bit of a tension because it was done at the same time as BGG.com. And yeah, what? Somewhere yeah, at BGG. You had to choose which one to go. Yeah, and, you know, it was really sort of, it's a hard choice, because it was sort of the choice between, like, audience and friends, or, you know, like, friends and industry and market and audience. Yeah. And, you know, there was a lot of tension there, and some people just said well i want to meet the new players and some people are like i want to be with the the old players and the older and the, and the industry um and you know i think but nevertheless without a doubt as far as a board game it penny arcade doing pax unplugged is sort of like a major game studio doing a kickstarter right like <laughs> yeah, in some it ways is. it's like it's not fair, but it is I mean, <laughs> it's a great thing but it's like oh of course they have thirty thousand people at the convention that's like a, a small convention for them. <laughs> um, whereas you have game conventions that have been around that are coming up that are, you know, like struggling to get three, 4,000. So it's a huge market, but also the audience is different. The types of games they were interested in difference. And it really was, it's the, it's creating that link between sort of, and I don't even like saying target games anymore or, or Barnes and Noble games. Cause that's basically all the games now, but like really yeah. consumer um, mass market board card games. Um, and now, linking it to more heavy duty insider, you know, tabletop type games. And, sure. um, you know, it's, it's been it's a, great to see. Yeah, it's a good point. And I think a lot's happened in the last few years that's paved that way. It's almost, you can move it from target to, to Amazon. Uh, Am you know, having companies that only have games on Amazon means that the distribution models like completely changed. Um, and so if I bought cards against humanity five or six years ago on Amazon and only at Amazon, 
that's the audience that's now going to these these big conventions. Oh, for sure. That's what that's where they get their games. Yeah, and the and the the the, the um the mechanics are just changing in terms of you know if maybe there was a handful of direct to consumer games last year or I I mean like a handful of ones that could have been in consumer right there's plenty of ones that are direct to consumer because consumer doesn't pick it up but like ones that like were of the mag- of a large magnitude and a big audience that decided you know these are going to be you know Kickstarter exclusives or online only yeah. that trend is just growing you have new publishers that are very much Kickstarter first and very much about taking one of the things that's going to be most disruptive to the industry is as more and more companies go to direct to consumer for the specific purpose of taking the extra margin and investing it in the game. That is to say, the more you have games that use that margin to have be higher quality components and 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 graphics, yeah. and um, the more disruptive that is because um, it it, um, it it can continues to push the um, barrier to entry and quality bar like one of the things yeah. you see like if you're like, expectations right yeah well you're like hey i'm gonna consumer. go buy a dollar ios game or a five dollar free to play ios game or whatever you know the level of en- graphic quality and comp- you know it, you know huge teams building these games that then are free to play or, or a couple bucks you know it used to be you could get in with less and and you're, you're sort of seeing that transition so the more games that are direct to consumer and don't just take that money for their pockets, but actually take that money and make games that essentially is a, a $50 game with $20 worth of stuff in it rather than a $50 game with $10 worth of stuff of it, in it. It's yeah. it's it's going to make it rough for the industry in different ways. It'll also be fantastic gaming, right? But so those are some of the challenges that are going to be coming this year. And it's, it's tough. I mean, even uh, for Pencil First Games, I haven't, I don't sell on Amazon. I, I, I go in through distribution and into the retail. And like it's not like I couldn't, um, but I just haven't done it right. And but coming into this year, it's like I still see all my games for sale on Amazon, right? And and so it's like, well, should I just like I'm, I'm not interested in undercutting the market. I actually like being in retail, but you know, there's still this this group that's being sold and these copies of games that you know maybe aren't like you know I still have like. Uh, siblings the siblings trouble is a game of mine i only have like i don't know i only have like 35 copies left or 30 copies left but you know at at the retail level a couple get picked up a month i mean it's not you know so how am i going to move those i could put them up on amazon i could have my own site or i could just sell them at cons which is what i usually do but um that's sort of part of the conversation so it's really super dynamic and changing it's a very interesting yeah. time yeah it is i'm interested uh like uh there was an escape room game that uh is a werewolf theme that had a kickstarter and then it got picked up by uh i want to say mattel and so it's coming out for this this holiday season i want to see what the difference is between those games one was like 50 dollars on kickstarter and it's 30 dollars at walmart um sure so i'm interested in that 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 difference right there or or even another really interesting game was fog of love which is sort of a Kickstarter darling, really out there relationship game. Um, really oh, yeah. high quality. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But then they signed this Walmart exclusive, but they're advertising it on Board Game Geek, like nonstop. So you mm-hmm. have this direct. Yeah. And, and so it's retail, but it's one retailer. And, you know, gamers are like, Walmart isn't really a board gamer retailer you know today maybe that you know that perhaps they want to be but like it's weird it's not bad it's weird and i think more and more people are just going to try and do different things and um again you're you're just gonna it's the kind of thing you just got to drive the car two years down the road and then look back and say oh that's what happened that's what that was going that's where (laughs) that thing was going um yeah all right man. for sure but actually um even though this is on my new equipment, I'm still testing out the timing on the videos and stuff. But thanks so much for being on. Thank you for supporting you. Uh, Gaming with Edo. I, I, I really appreciate it. And uh, again, very interested to see what's happening with um, the the uh, the coursework uh, as you develop. Okay. Yeah. Hey everybody, Edo here, and thanks for watching Gaming with Edo reviews over here on this playlist. 
league and insider videos over here on this one. Subscribe, share, all that good stuff. But most importantly, play some great games. Thanks.